This is absolutely the smallest PC that I could put together and still use a desktop class GPU. We also have a 16 core, 32 thread CPU. And by the way, when it comes to that GPU, we've got 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super small form factor workstation slash 1440p gaming machine. And for the base of this unit, we're going to be using the Menace Forum MSA2. For the past couple of years, these have been some of my favorite small form factor units to use, along with the MS-01 from Menace Forum, mainly because we've got a PCIe slot in here and we can add a dedicated GPU. It's actually pretty simple. In the past, our choices were pretty limited because it's a pretty thin unit. We've got to go with a single slot, low profile card. And in this video, we're going to be adding something a bit more powerful. But before we jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $23.31. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11, and from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Okay, so like I mentioned, in the past with the MS01 or the MSA2, which we have here, We've been kind of limited by our GPU choices. Single slot, low profile. RTX 3060, great choice. You want to go with an RX 6400, you're going to get a little less performance. I even picked up a custom cooler for the NVIDIA A2000 to put in the MS01. But I do want a little more GPU performance out of a machine like this. And again, we just don't have a lot of space to work with. So something like, let's say the RTX 5060 low profile would be awesome but it requires an 8-pin PCIe connector. And don't get me wrong, I mean, you could do it. You'd have to run an external power supply along with a PC. I personally didn't want to do that right now, but it's something that could definitely be done. Now, if you've got the power supply and everything like that, you still have to worry about the case lighting on. And for me, I wouldn't mind running this without a case on it. I could just set it behind my monitor. I'd be good to go. But for this one, I wanted a card that put out a little more performance than the RTX 3060 or the A2000 and doesn't require any extra power. So for this, I'm going to be installing the Intel Arc Pro B50. 16 gigs of VRAM, it also has 16 XE cores, and the card was really designed for small form factor workstations, but you can still get some pretty good 1440p gaming out of the way on this thing. And in order to install it, I will need to remove the bracket. I've just removed the screws from the low profile bracket and uh, we can slot this right in here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the PCIe slot in the MSA2 and MS01 is actually an X8 4.0 slot. The B50 is an X8 5.0 card. So there's a chance we'll be losing a bit there, but I don't think it's gonna be that much. So we've got the card in and the top isn't gonna slide on because we've got a much higher profile card in here. It's a dual slot low profile card and this thing is meant to house a single slot low profile card. So what I've done here is actually printed a new case and originally I was gonna design my own but I did some searching and over on printables, Jared C01 already came up with a really nice case. This'll fit the Menace Forum MSA2 or the 01 I'll leave a link for it in the description in case you want to do something like this to your A2 or 01. And as you can see, when you compare it to the stock case, it's much taller. It's still a very small form factor unit. Now, there is one modification that I want to do to the next version I print for uh, my MS01. I want to add some ventilation up top. So basically, with this setup here, it's going to pull all of the air in through the front. But around back, there's some ventilation for the M.2 drives. It just looks like uh, this setup is kind of meant to pull all of the cool air through the front. And I think we could keep this a little chillier if we had something like that on the top. But this fit perfectly on the MSA2 and the MS01. Actually snaps right in. And there's a locking mechanism around back on these mini PCs. And it's here on this 3D printed case. So it will lock into place. It's not going to go anywhere. But again, I do think adding some vents up top would really help out with cooling. And we'll take a look at thermals by the end. 
But the front intake has been dramatically increased with this larger case, so it might just be fine. So jumping right in here, I've been doing a lot of testing with this PC and I'm actually really impressed with the performance across the board. When it comes to like photo editing, I mean, it's got you covered with that B50, especially paired up with that 9955HX. Video editing does leave a little bit to be desired like in DaVinci Resolve. It's just not gonna match a higher end Nvidia card. It can definitely be done and with 16 gigs of VRAM, if we're rendering on the GPU, not a problem for 4K high bitrate content. You can see we've got those 16 cores, 32 threads. I've got 32 gigs of system memory here at 5,600 megatransfers per second. And I really wanted to add 64 here, but given RAM prices, um, I think I can stick with 32 right now for this little machine. And of course, instead of using the integrated graphics, we've got that Intel Arc Pro B50 with 16 gigs of VRAM. And ever since this card launched, I've been a huge fan of it. I mean, given the form factor and the fact that we've got a 16 gig GPU here that'll fit in a machine this size, it's really amazing what they've done. Gaming, AI workloads, it's actually really nice. But unfortunately, the way it is right now, you just can't overclock this card. And usually from the Intel graphics software, you can go to performance and right up here at the top, you've got a little section you can click on and do some overclocking or some power limit management. It's pretty locked down. I've tried a few hacks and I just can't get by any of them right now. But I do have the Pro Graphics driver installed. You can go with the regular Intel Arc driver and out of the box with the MSA2 resizable bar was enabled so I didn't have to worry about that. And this is very important for these Intel Arc cards. One thing that I've been messing around with quite a bit on this is like Comfy UI for video and image generation. And it's not gonna match an RTX 5090 for sure for local AI workloads, but given the form factor, price and size, not bad. If you're just picking one of these cards up or any Intel Arc card, there's a really awesome application that kind of gets overlooked quite a bit, and that's the Intel AI Playground. It makes it super easy to get up and running with AI workloads, be it large language models for chat, image generation, you can edit images, and now we have video generation here. And uh, what this is actually gonna use is Comfy UI. This is basically a container. So if I go to video settings over here, at the very bottom, we can open up Comfy UI. It's a little overwhelming for newer users, so I would suggest something like this, and this will get you started. It's basically a two-click install. So I've just pulled the task manager up over on this side so we can see the usage on the CPU, memory, and GPU. From the AI Playground, we're gonna go to Video, Video Settings, and I wanted to show you this because, uh, again, this is very overlooked, and this could even work out for power users. Uh, in fact, on my larger Intel Arc cards, this is how I got Comfy UI installed without having to worry about a bunch of different scripts. One click, Comfy UI was up and running on the Intel Arc card. So we've got uh, text to video, image to video, start to end, LTX video, or WAN, or WAN 2.1, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. I'm gonna be using LTX in this video. This is something that I really haven't messed with that much. So we're gonna go text to video. Right down here, our resolution, device, obviously we wanna use that Intel Arc Pro B50. When it comes to megapixel, I guess this is gonna be your quality, 0.5. Uh, we can change the aspect ratio and our resolution right here is 896 by 570. Total frames, so we can change the length. We can also change the frame rate. I'm just gonna be using LTX video here and we'll do something simple. A mini PC on a desk playing a AAA video game. We'll generate, and over here, it's gonna use some of our system memory, and that's kinda of why I wanted to go up to 64, but you know, generating something this small here, it's not really gonna eat up every bit of memory. But once it starts the real generation, it's gonna use the Intel Arc Pro B50, and it should max this out. Yeah, there we go. 6.2 gigs of VRAM being used here. And if we wanted to go with a uh, you know much better looking video to generate, we could use a lot more VRAM here. But we'll let this finish up and see what happens. The video's done. 
we'll just play it and it's just a three second clip and that's definitely not a triple a game but upping the quality on this or going into the full comfy ui adding different nodes for better quality and things like that it can definitely be done here so a little three second video and i was kind of hoping it would be a pretty cool game looks like uh, a downgraded version of ssx tricky we've also got image generation and we'll just generate this i think it'll do four images for us this should be pretty quick though yeah so 20 steps on each of these images and i think it'll do four if i'm not mistaken four or five okay there we go let me open this up and we use the arc pro b50 to do this these actually look pretty good It just makes it really easy to run AI workloads on an Arc GPU. Now, aside from that, another thing that I've been doing here, obviously, is gaming on this mini PC. And the Pro B50 isn't really designed for gaming, but it can definitely do it. But before we get into that, I did want to show you some benchmarks that I ran on this machine. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, and this 9955HX is putting down some good performance. Coming in with a single core of 3017, multi 17043. When it comes to GPU performance, I used 3D Mark. We've got Steel Nomad with a 1638 and a 16.39 FPS. And the final one I ran was 3D Mark Time Spy. We got a total score of 8444. So it's not going to win any benchmark awards and the 5060 will outperform this but given that we don't need any extra power and it's in such a small form factor case i think this is a really good option and you can game at 1440p on this this is the very first time i've started up arc raiders on anything and right now we're at 1440p medium settings with xcss set to quality no frame generation this does have fsr frame gen if you wanted to use it but you can see that we're up over 120 FPS with this. And I'm sure once you get into multiplayer, after you finish the tutorial, it will drop down. But I think that this would run at about 70 to 80 FPS in large battles. The next game I wanted to test here was Borderlands 4. And with this one at 1440p, I did need to enable XESS frame gen. It's some of my favorite frame gen. Uh, we just do X2 with this B50. Not too bad, given that we're at 1440p high with XESS set to balanced. Here's Doom the Dark Ages, and this worked better than I thought it would. We're at medium settings with XESS set to balanced, no frame generation, and this is one of those games that does need a lot of VRAM to take it up. We do have enough VRAM to go up to like Ultra with it, but the B50 is going to struggle at Ultra 1440. Now dropping it down to 1080, you can definitely get it done there, but at 1440, medium is a real sweet spot. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high settings with XESS set to quality, no frame gen, and this does support XESS frame gen, so if you wanted to almost double that frame rate there, you could, even at 1440. But if you don't mind playing at 1440 high, you don't even need it. We're seeing averages in the mid 70s with Cyberpunk 2077 on this little system. Going into this, one thing I was concerned about were temps because, uh, you know, we've only got that front ventilation to draw air in. I do think if I customize the 3D print with a vent on this side here, maybe like a honeycomb vent, we could see lower temperatures. But to my surprise, it didn't hit thermal throttle. Definitely a little warmer than I'd like, but we've got a mobile chip here with 16 cores and 32 threads. Average CPU temps while gaming were 80 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded was 88. For the Intel Arc B50, average gaming temps were 70, and the maximum I recorded was 74. So yeah, I mean, we're not hitting thermal throttle with it, but it could get pretty close, especially if I went for hours on this thing. So modifying the side panel over here with a little bit of ventilation would definitely help. I'm pretty happy with the performance that I'm seeing out of this thing when it comes to gaming and AI workloads. It's not going to beat an RTX 5090, but we've got a very small form factor unit that can get a lot done. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.